Hi there. So in our last video, we were talking about building a very simple WordPress theme. And we ended up with a theme that basically wasn't broken. And it's sitting here. It's my template. We don't even have a screenshot for it yet. But that's OK. In fact, for now, we'll just leave it like that. And this template, when we activated it, just says my new template, which also so happens to be the name of our, of our website, which is my new template. If we go back to Text Wrangler, we can see that we've put in two link tags, one for the RSS and another for the pingback, which is the official URL of the page that we're actually sitting on. And then this little declaration here, which is the WP underscore head, which lets people know that we're in fact using WordPress. Again, you could omit this if you wanted to. Now down here, I've got a PHP block, and I've got a blog info, and then I've got name which is the actual name of the blog that we're actually developing. I've got blog info name, which is the name of the website or blog that we're developing. Now, I'm going to cut out a lot of this white space that I put in the last video because it's not necessary and it kind of clutters things. And I'm just going to add some new lines. Now, when we go back to our dashboard here, under settings, I can see that there's also a tagline. Now I want to get that tagline in there too, so I'm going to just create an H2, and in the H2 I'm going to put in another PHP block, and I'm going to say blog info, and this is description. And I'm going to save that. Now if I refresh this page, I'm going to see just another WordPress web blog, which happens to be the tagline that I have here as well. Already we're creating a link between what is being put in the dashboard and what's appearing on our website. Now our website isn't particularly interesting right now, but we can change that too. Now if I view the source, I'm not linking in any way to the style.css file that I created in the last video. So let's do that now. I'm going to close this view sourced window, which I got to, by the way, by just going view and then page source. This is on Firefox. And I'm going to reference that CSS file that I created in the last video, which is just sitting here, and it's basically empty as well. To do that, I'm just going to create some space in my head section, and I'm going to type link rel. rel is the relation style sheet. and hyperlink reference equals and then again we're going to do something with blog info blog info style sheet url semicolon and I'm gonna double quote that type equals text slash CSS and I'm just gonna close that now let's see what this does for us. If I refresh this page and I view my page source again, I'll see that WordPress has actually figured out where my style sheet is sitting on the web server. Now if we take this a step further and I go to style.css and I say that I want my body, and I'm going to open this up, background to be red, and I save this, then my background will turn red. Now, that's not very appealing to the eyes, so let's just delete that for a minute. Now, something I like to do when I'm working on a website is I like to clear all the padding and the margins that the browser will have by default. And to do this, I'm going to use the star, and then I'm going to open my squiggly brackets, and I'm going to say padding 0, 0, margin 0, 0. And this will make everything zero. If I refresh it, everything is going to be hugging the top left of the page. Generally speaking, it's nice to have some kind of fixed width or container where I can store the body of my website. In order to do this, I'm going to go back to my index.php file. And instead of just having my header and my header2 my blog info name and my blog info description sitting under the body, 
I'm going to create a div here. And my div is going to be of class header. And I'm just going to indent these two lines. And I'm going to close my div here. And I'm going to hit save. Now nothing should happen. Perfect. So what I've done is I've identified a section of my blog, or a section of my template rather, that I want to be classified as a header. Before we keep going, I'm going in the style.css file, I'm going to create another div, and this one is going to be called canvas. And I'm going to indent this again. So if we think about this in terms of a canvas, or a frame where we can actually put content, and then a header, we're creating a very simple language for defining how our style sheet or our template is going to be rendered. Now that I have canvas and header, I can properly use them in my style.css file. So I'm going to do canvas, and I want my canvas to be about 900 pixels wide, and I want it to have a background that's white, this is hexadecimal, and I think that's it. Now I want the background of my body to be some kind of green. So let's see if my hexadecimal is decent. In fact, you can just put anything in there. Perfect. So what you're seeing is you're seeing a 900 pixel canvas, and then beneath it, our body has a green background and everything inside the canvas is now sitting on a white background. We can make the center line by just going and typing margin, zero, and then auto. Now, the first declaration here for margin corresponds to the top and the bottom margins for the particular element that we're dealing with. The auto corresponds with the left and the right margins of the element that we're dealing with. So when I hit save again, this should be now center aligned. So already our template is starting to take a little bit of shape. Another thing I like to do is I like to stay away from Times New Roman, since Times New Roman tends to be a very good font for print, but not so much when you're trying to read something on a web page. So I'm going to go into the star over here and I'm going to say font family Helvetica Arial Sans Serif. What this means is that if the person has Helvetica installed on their computer, they're going to be able to see it as Helvetica. If not, they'll see it as Arial, which pretty much everybody has. And if not that, then just any kind of sans serif font. Basically a font like Arial that doesn't have any serifs, that doesn't have any little nooks at the end of the letters. So if I refresh this page again, we move to a Helvetica typeface. Now the next step is to build what is called the loop.